Folks, Joe DeRosa here. Let's talk about live dates and other things. I got the plugs coming at you. Houston, Texas, come and take it festival at the secret group, May 19th and May 22nd. I'll be shooting my new hour called I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. Two shows only. Intimate tickets are on sale now. They're going fast. Get, grab yours while you can. I'll also be at the Creek and Cave in Austin, Texas, uh, May 20th and 21st. Not shooting those shows, but running that same one-man show hour. I actually am looking at this as a one-man show versus just a stand-up hour. Uh, not that it's any better or worse than a stand-up hour. It's not a competition. I'm just saying how I see it. Anyway, come on out. Uh, I'll be uh, in other places coming up soon. I know the punchline in July is happening in San Francisco. Tickets aren't available just yet, but they're coming soon. And of course, stop by Joey Roses in New York City when you have a chance. 174 Rivington Street. We're open Tuesday through Sunday. Full bar and killer sandwiches. Go to joeyrosesnyc.com for any information you need there. And if you want to buy tickets to those shows, go to joederosainfo.com. All the merch is available right now. Yes, it is. Links are in the videos. Links are on our social pages. Merch is finally out. Uh, if you go see him May 14th at the Red Bank, you can't see me May 14th at the Beacon, but it's sold out. Yeah, both and it's sold, sold out. out. So you can't do it anymore. So at you all. know what? Go see Steve Byrne. Go see That's somebody else May 14th. <laughs> Steve Byrne. Yeah. Uh, May 21st in San Diego, May 22nd at the Wiltern in Los Angeles, and uh, July 15th at the Virgin uh, Theater in, in, La in Las Vegas. All fun stuff. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic, I'm talking taste buds. Folks, welcome to T-A-S-T-E, -E, buds. I taste that. buds. Taste buds. T-A-S-T-E, buds. buds. My man is here today. I'm gonna take my shoes off. Take your shoes off. Right. Mr. Brian Quinn, the I mighty like Quinn. To, to I, before we even get started, I brought something for you. <laughs> Oh, you did? Well, not not really. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't want you to get too excited. But right. I watched a movie last night, and I said to myself, it was so fucking weird. And I was like, "There's, there's. I want to bring the DVD and give it to some to you. Okay. I'm saying someone. Like, I'm not like I'm gonna reveal that you're the person I'm giving it to. <laughs> like, because I want you to see. You might have already seen it, but um, I thought like you could watch it, and then like one day when I come back, not this one. Like, you could talk about it, or you could text me later about it. This um, is so funny, dude. This yeah. is how I watched this last night, and I just I, I need you to watch it. This is how, by the way, ninety nine percent of the romances in Woody Allen movies start like this, where <laughs> where a guy is like, "I thought of you, and I would like you to listen to this and tell me what you feel, dude, dude." Hold on a second. What? Hold on a second. What? Pimp. This what is about to happen? I can't even. I can't believe what is about to happen. What do you right mean? Now. What's happening? Hold on a second. <laughs> Q just handed me this Blu-ray of a game, a movie called Death Game. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> no way. I, as I watched it, I was like, I must, I must get DeRosa to watch this. What is this like, movie about? It's, uh, I, it's so, all right. So this is the movie it's about. Uh, they, me, they remade it with Keanu Reeves a few years back where this guy, his family guy, he's got a wife and kids and his wife's got to leave the house with the kids for the, a few days. Mm -hmm. And then his doorbell rings on a stormy night and it's these two like super hot young chicks who come in and their game is they try and seduce dudes. And if the guy is like, look, I'm married, um, then I guess the guy's life doesn't get fucking upturned and tortured. But if he does fuck them, oh, they wow. stay, then they don't leave. And they they fuck with wow. him and they screw with his life and and uh, yeah so that's Death Game and it's like it's like a cult it sounds amazing. like a grindhouse cult classic here it is he's, oh, he's no. already got it he's already got it <laughs> all right okay dude I can't believe you just pulled that out okay so I <laughs> mine's unopened still yeah I watched mine last night <laughs> mine was unopened till yesterday so look okay. at this all right because I bought it I bought it when they announced the special you got release. the keychain I got the keychain. <laughs> <laughs> so how how did you find out about it? Because here's the thing: I have a subscription to this magazine, Room Org. Okay, Room Org. I, I read. I have Fangoria. Okay, uh, but you know, I, I know Room Org is a little more hardcore, correct? Uh, than Fangoria, maybe. I don't think it's more hardcore. I think it's more for the collectors. Oh, okay. Um, it gets because Fangoria is a little more like interviews and movie reviews, and yeah. that seems to be the just the, the bulk of it, right. at least. Room Org has some of that, but they get a lot into like there's 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 full like here are the horror related books that okay. came out this month 
And they do a special section in each issue. I think this is the issue with Death Game. But they do a special section where it's called like Unearthed and Undead or something, where they right. talk about a movie that was that was deemed lost that after you know, a long process, somebody got this thing, got the rights to it, and is finally getting it re-released in, right. in its proper whatever. And I read the one about Death Game, and I was, and it said Grindhouse is, this company Grindhouse is yeah. releasing it, and I was like, I gotta buy that, man. Like, this sounds so sounds crazy. Sounds wild, right? I just bought it on blind faith. That's, I did the same exact thing. Wow. I, I don't know where I read the article, but I, 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 I'm on, like, all sorts of mailing lists and stuff. Right. Grindhouse I've ordered from before. Um, and I guess maybe I just got the email about it, and I was like, man, that seems... Why do you guys like love horror movies so much? What's up? Why do you love horror movies so much? Oh, I mean... Uh, you subscribe to magazines about it. I've never <laughs> heard of these. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, the same reason like anybody likes anything. It's like, it's... it's, it's We're talking about, yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, I like... Uh, I but I I don't know about you. I like them personally because I find them to be a great escape from reality. It's the same reason I like video games. It's like I like stuff that takes yeah. me out of it, which is why ninety nine percent of the horror movies I watch are either supernatural or so insane that it's absurd. Like this is probably so insane it's absurd. It, I, it's batshit. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. so crazy that I was like, I got to bring it to Joe. I got to come for you. I got to bring it to Joe because I want you to watch and get your opinion on it. And now I, I don't even have to worry about it. I can bring that home with me. <laughs> Dude, I, you're the only person I know that even has even heard of that movie. And you yeah. heard of it in the same way I did, where it's like you heard of it and just bought it. Because yeah. the, the whole article on it in here was like, this movie is fucking out of its head. It like, is <laughs> the fucking... I, I you So Brian Johnson came over last night. Yeah. And we watched Death Game. And we watched the remake with Keanu Reeves they made a few years ago called That's Knock, Knock Knock. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that that was a remake. It's a remake. E Eli Roth made it. Yeah. And uh, it's, you know, it, it's a remake. It's not as crazy. I mean, it has Anna Darmus in it. And she's like <laughs> going like full on seductress mode. So it's like, it's great to watch. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it doesn't, it's not the batshit. And the ending to this film is one of the craziest things I've seen. I, I'm like, you ha you must watch it. And then... You get to the end of the Canaries version, and it's like, oh, it's not. They they totally like. Yeah. All right. Suddenly, there's a moral lesson sprinkled in, oh, and and, and, it. and and yeah, you're like, ah, forget it. Yeah. I I imagine when I read the article, they must have mentioned that it was remade into Knock Knock, and I just didn't catch it or something. I can't yeah. believe they wouldn't say what do you guys that. I think but the best horror movie of all time is. I, I The Exorcist is my. I ride or die. Like I, I, the Exorcist is so good to me and so scary to me that I won't watch it. I will only watch it every few years because I don't want to get used to how scary I think it is. That's what happened to me. I like really like cherish it. It's one of the few yeah. movies that still scares me a little bit. Did you like the directors? Like when they went in and added the spider walk and all that shit. Yeah. You like that? You like that, or you like the old one better? I like that version, especially after I read the book. The book that mm. that version. It is so close to the book, it's crazy. The only yeah. thing they omit from the book is there's one Reagan scene that's that's very sexual. She does something very sexual. Oh, uh, yeah. And, like, and e even, even with the shit they put in the movie, I was like, I get why they cut this out of the movie at the time. They were like, this is too much. Just too much. But, um, and she does it, like, to taunt the priest. And it, it's it's a pretty rough scene. But aside from that... The only thing in the book that was cut out of the movie is there's a subplot where you think where the detective suspects that the butler killed the ger uh, the uh, director that kept calling him a Nazi. Oh, okay. Because remember Reagan kills him. Yeah. And they ju they're just in the movie. They're just like we don't know what killed this guy. He's uh, dead though. Right. In the book. Bec there's that scene in the movie where he's taunting the butler and calling him a Nazi. In the book. The butler has this like secret life, and you think that the butler might have murdered the director. Okay. And then you find out that the butler's secret life is not sinister at all. It's that he's got a family he's taking care of. So he's like quietly taking care of. So he's I always, always like, sneaking off to take care of them. So it's not interesting for a movie, a horror movie, an atmospheric it, it horror movie. It wasn't important enough of a character in the movie that it would have just. Okay. You know, it added. The book, the book is way more like. Like it, it spends more time on like we don't think that this demon thing is real. We think that this is okay. a, psych a psychotic break of some kind. They they speed through that stuff, and that subplot is part of that whole thing. They I speed see. through that in the movie to get to the good stuff. But other than that, 
the movie pretty, is pretty so effective. identical. Yeah, dude. it's crazy. I have. Yeah. I I mean, I wouldn't say I got lucky in when I'm when I say this, but like I had ordered this like leather bound tome of that and legion is uh the sequel right? reading legion right now oh okay so i had so I on my bed that. we're dude it's and kismet then, today baby dude, look at us <laughs> like, i don't even know what we're supposed to be arguing so i so like i ordered like it was this this it, you know how they do like super fancy versions of books i have like hitchhiker's guides of the galaxy yeah. and all so i got it because i was like i want to read it and like uh, let me get into it and then like two weeks after i ordered it it comes signed by william Blatty. He died two weeks after I ordered it. So I was like, oh, fuck, man. It sucks that he died. But, like, this is definitely going up in value, right? Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty, pretty, you know, I'd rather he be alive than, than, no. than the book go up, like, 50 bucks in value. But go to Shopping Pimp. Let's see what this thing yeah. is. That's if the one click, all the way to yeah. the right there. Yeah. If you just, holy oh, shit, that's going for 600? Six billies. No, I bought that. I bought that pre-death price. Would yeah. you pay for it? I don't remember, but I know for like a fact. I never bucks, yeah, probably, I never yeah. paid 600 bucks for it. Holy shit. Yeah. That's wild. Oh, so that's so, oh, so you're reading Legion now. The movie Legion, I love. It is so fucking bonkers. It's scary. It is I scary. I love it. I love that movie, and I have the, the Scream Factory release where the first disc is Exorcist Three, okay, and then the second disc is Legion. When Legion is the is the William Peter the Blatty cut, cut right? yeah, where it's got all the the lost footage yeah, in it I, and everything. I, I saw, I seen that version. I'm not sure which I prefer to be honest, but but it's, it's funny. The scariest parts in the movie, I don't think, are going to be in the book. Like, I don't think they're going to describe. A lady comes out with scissors. Like, yeah, you know, how do you? Like, it sounds goofy. Like when you when you when you say stuff. My friend. Like that. Uh, my friend uh, uh, Jesse Pop, who's a very funny comic, he had such a funny joke about John Wick. Oh yeah, and he's like, he's like, I, I love those movies. He's like, you know, they were books first. <laughs> he goes, what's that like reading a John Wick book? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, John Wick is fighting a guy, and now, well, now they're in the bathroom. Wait, no, now they're back in the kitchen. They're in the bathroom again. He's punching a guy with a book. He's punching a guy in the face with a book. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like Harry Carey running the fucking commentary. <laughs> but That's um funny. I love Legion. The book is the book is is r- vibes a little more like a murder mystery. Okay. But it's very dark. It is creepy. And the detective character in the book is awesome. And it's fun reading the book after you saw the movie because you could picture George C. Scott. You get to yeah. pretend it's him in your head. Right. And the character is so funny, dude. He's yeah? so he's so funny in the book. There's glimpses of it in the movie, like when he's like, and when he's talking to his buddy, like his uh, who's a cop friend over there, that guy that walks around with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's always breaking that guy's balls. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you know, I ble- I ble- I bless you, my son. You are now anointed. You're dismissed. Uh-huh. Like he talks like that in the movie a couple times, but he talks like that through the entire book. Okay, and. In the book, they talk about how he always carries books on him. So in like his trench coat, he's always <laughs> pulling books out, and he just talks like that. And he goes on these pontifications that are so nuts, but like so brilliant. So and you're loving the book. It's an awesome book. I'll start reading it. It's an awesome book. We have a book club now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, read that. And uh, I wish I was done with it. I'd just give it to you right now. I haven't. I have that. Well, probably not going to. If it's 600 bucks, I'm probably not going to crack open. Oh, that's right. Open. You have it in the. I'm not going to crack open yeah, that. Don't open I'm that. sitting on that. No, yeah, don't I'll open that. I'll sell that right now on anybody out there. Yeah. 700 bucks. <laughs> have you guys ever known anyone who had to get an exorcism in real life? No. Silly. Um, <laughs> I know a little bit about it because my dad's a deacon. Oh, really? Yeah, my dad's a church deacon. And um, in Catholic, the Catholic Church, and he's done them. No, 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 oh, no. Okay. We have a guy on Tell Him, Steve, Dave, who who's part of like like the Pittsburgh. He's the guy that the church calls to for exorcisms. He's he's a deacon. Wow. That's wild. And he comes on the podcast and talks about it. Um, you know, I like the guy. He's an honest guy. Uh, you know, so I, I don't think he's lying. Uh, so if you take it on his own terms, then it's it's fascinating. It's fascinating stuff. I was writing a script w- with a friend of mine. It was the first thing I ever wrote, and it never, nothing ever happened with it. But whatever, we wrote, we were writing a script. It was an anthology horror movie. It was called "The Devil Knows Me." Was the title, and it was all devil related stories. But the wraparound was about an exorcism. So I remember I called my dad, and I was like getting information from him yeah. about how it works. And one of the interesting things he told me, at least in their diet. Di- di- Diocese? 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 Diocese. 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 
whatever the hell it is. <laughs> anyway, he was like, we don't know who, the one he was at the time, he was like, we don't know. A lot of them, you don't know who the exorcist is. They keep the guy anonymous. Like, oh, in wow. Certain, in certain in certain regions, I guess, that's just what they do. And he's like, you know, they don't call attention to it um, because, I guess, f- because it could be exploited so easily. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I guess if people knew, like, that guy's the exorcist. Yeah. You could just <laughs> call him and be like, I got a, I got a guy. problem. You know? Because you have to go through so many. You also have to go through so many tiers to get an exorcism approved. Right. So, but uh, it was really interesting. Do I was th- prayed over as a kid for being a bad kid. Yeah. My parents had it. <laughs> My parents had a prayer group, and they prayed over uh, me the whole prayer What did you group. do? What was the tipping? What was the inciting incident to this? What was the final straw that they're like, that's it? I think I told my mom to go to hell or something. It wasn't anything, uh, that, it wasn't anything yeah. that crazy. Right, right, right. All right. <laughs> I wasn't, like, you... blowing up cats or anything. <laughs> oh, well, I'm happy to hear about that. <laughs> do, well, do remember you... kids would do that when you were little, like no bad kid kids? No kid I ever did that. Uh, I knew a kid in my neighborhood that chopped the head off a turtle, and, like, the entire neighborhood yeah. just turned, like, ostracize them yeah kids would like we had bad kids in my neighborhood and they would like they would like they would like put like firecrackers inside like frogs Aww. and shit like that it was it was i mean i never saw them do it they would just talk, they would talk about how they did it but hopefully I, they were just bullshitting i don't think oh, so man. these kids were pretty really? sick i wasn't allowed to hang out with them i this, remember <laughs> when i was a kid I, I had like goldfish and i had like a fake um like house in the fish tank and I wanted the fish to go in the house so badly I must have been like eight or nine so I took the fish and I put them in the house and when I was putting them in the fish died I guess I broke the goldfish Aww. back and I cried for days days I'm sure yeah. my, my parents thought there was something wrong with me <laughs> I, I, I felt so bad about it no I remember I used to go fishing with this I used to go fishing a lot when I was a kid it's something I want to do again I haven't done it in years but um I used to go a lot as a kid, and there was a kid I was friends with. His name was Billy something. My mom and his mom were friends. And on Fridays, I, we would go to his house. And my, the, my mom and his mom would hang out, and me and this kid would go fishing. Nice. He had a pond near his house. And I remember we went down one day, and these, these you know, like the bad kids in his neighborhood. Um, bad kids, just to digress for a second, bad kids in the suburbs were so fucking sick. Like, like if you watch Stephen King movies... And read Stephen King books. He depicts it perfectly. Yeah, the bullies in those movies are like that. Is what suburban bullies are like. Like they're sinister. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty sinister. Evil. Actually, that like, that was one of the failings of the It movies. Like the new ones. Yeah. Meant it, one of the failings was like these bullies aren't that scary. To yeah, me. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, the bullies in Christine are it's nuts, uh, man. Like it's Artie, they're bu- poor Artie. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway. The, those kids in his neighborhood, I remember they they had a fish that they caught and it was alive and they were just like throwing it like into like the ground and against uh, rock and it was uh, and like right. we were so like we were so like disturbed like that that memory haunts me to this day yeah. it makes me f- and I remember like looking at the kid and we were both like just like this is horrible but like you couldn't say anything these kids would have beat the living. Yeah. Like that, we would have been dead, dude. The damage is done. The fish is already smashed against the rock. The fish, and quite actually, the fish was asking for it a little bit. Yeah, it was a bit of a <laughs> prick, that fish. <laughs> fish opened his mouth. But no, these kids, the kids like that in my neighborhood that I was talking about that blew up the frogs. Yeah. One of the kids used to tie scissors to a string and swing them around like this and go uh, near, like literally, uh, he, and let it get. Let the radius of it get wider and wider to like scare you as you got farther away from him. They they were sick. How old were they at that? What do you think? Like twelve? I think these kids were about twenty six. They were <laughs> uh, they were like and they're out there the now. They're out there right now. Yeah. They were kids of their own and they're little pieces of That's shit. That's scary. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I I I I hate. I'm actually getting sick to my stomach. Do what? What? Uh, what are we debating? Let's. Why don't we jump into the? I, <laughs> I'm sorry. Because it reminded me a story. I vibe, so no, bad, I sorry. saw like these neighborhood kids throw a rock at a squirrel once, and and they hit it. And the squirrel's like mate was so upset and screaming and crying and like uh, how you said it haunts you. It just reminded me of that and like my stomach got a little uh, nauseous and and yeah, like that, people that I, me, I, yeah. I feel people are gonna think that I'm that we come on here and then I bring the vibe down. No, I feel like I brought the vibe down. <laughs> no, but you don't talk like this with Sal, right? 
we and Sal get into all kinds of stuff. Yeah, this it's feels usually bad. more personally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's usually more personally aimed at uh, to, to to defame one another with Sal. You got a great energy. I can't, you know, well, n- not that Sal's got a bad energy, but but we no. bring it out of each other for some reason. Uh, yeah. I never knew that the exorcists in the church make thirty five grand a year. Yeah, I guess so. Wait, what? That's what it says here. They make. I think that's a free salary. Yeah. Oh, they get salaries. I thought they had to like. No, they they, they have get to get salary. They get some money. Yeah, they do. Actually, they get I don't a think. Salary. Well, that no, was the great. Houston was... Farrell, my high school. They they would they. I believe I remember them telling me that they get a salary, but they also get put a room and board and stuff like that. Oh yeah. That was one of my when the scan when the Catholic Church scandal happened with the altar boys. Dennis Miller. Oh my God! It was one of my favorite jokes. He was like. He was like, I always, I always, priests always freak me out to begin with, if I'm going to be honest. And he goes, hey, what's that guy's deal? No chicks, no money, ever. <laughs> oh, what could go wrong there? <laughs> <laughs> Such you know, like a quintessential. You go in the other Dennis direction Miller, and you're yeah. like, yeah, that, that guy's going to get tons of chicks and tons of money. Like you can see that going wrong. Right, too. right, right. Yeah, like, you just need like to find the, the middle. It's both ways. My dishwasher keeps beeping, but what are you going to do? Nothing. We're not going to um, do anything about it. Um, battle today is... Yeah. You know what? I think this has been such a lively discussion so far. I think we should do steak versus chicken. No. Okay. We're going to save it. Steak versus chicken is the next step. We were doing three apps total with, with my man Q here. Yeah. He stepped in. Sally Babe, um, he, he tweeted out about it. It's no secret. He went down with the vid for a minute, and our schedules got a little screwy because of it. Things got pushed back. So because of that, uh, Q kindly stepped in to to help us make up for some Well, episodes. I also haven't seen you in a while. I wanted yeah. to come. Like It's it's more about seeing you than helping out, if, it's, I, if I'm going to be clear. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hold on. I yeah. got to stop. I got to stop that. It's gonna keep babble, 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 babble. Usually babble's a bad word. Well, in this case, babble's a good word. Babble's a great sponsor here. Why? I like babble. They're helping you learn a second language, all right? Uh, we've all all tried learning a second language. Some of us took to it. Some of us didn't, like me, uh, whether it was in high school or college or, or whatever. Uh, the language classes weren't exactly the high point of my academic career. I, I had a hard time getting it. Now, thanks to babble, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language, whether you're going to be traveling abroad or just, you know, maybe you want to connect in a deeper way to a family member. Maybe you just want to have some fun and learn a different language. It doesn't matter. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. Hey, if you live in a city like New York, like I do, a second language can come in handy. A lot of languages are spoken in this city outside of my first language, English, and it helps to be able to communicate more. It's uh, it, and, and beyond just in a, in a, in a uh, um, functional way, uh, it helps just in improving your lifestyle and connecting to all different types of people. It's a beautiful thing. Babble, 15-minute lessons. That's how they make it a perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans. You know, but Babbel, uh, their lessons were created by over 100 language experts, real people. Uh, their teaching mes- method has been scientifically proven to be effective. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronun- pronunciation and accent. Anyway. Right now, you're going to save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash taste buds. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash taste buds for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Hello, Fresh. Hello, saying hello to you, the Fresh. Hello, Fresh. Good to see you, Fresh. Hello, Fresh. It's hello, Fresh. All right, here we are. We've talked about them before. We're going to talk about them again. Why? Because they're great. Hello Fresh, getting you the farm fresh seasonal produce and easy to make recipes delivered right to your door every week. We get it. We don't have time to get out there all the time. We don't have time to stop at the store and buy the meal we should be eating at night. Uh, we don't have time sometimes to stop at the store to buy the meal we could be eating at night. And more importantly, we don't always have the time to prepare the meal we should or could be eating at night. Or in the day, if you want, you don't have to do these at night. Uh, and that's where HelloFresh comes in. Okay. It's been a tough year with this pandemic. Some people don't feel fully comfortable going back into the store. Great. Here's a service that's going to bring you the ingredients, all the stuff you need to make a great, 
meal. Ingredients travel from the farm straight to your doorstep in under a week. So they're always fresh, uh, always without a trip to the grocery store, as I said, or the farmer's market. It's all about convenience here. HelloFresh's uh, chefs really know how to diversify the menu also, which is important. You want good food to be diverse. You eat the same thing all the time. You're going to get tired of it. You're not going to want to do it. You want to keep it interesting and fun. Seasonal recipes like salmon, limon, or pasta primavera. Uh, the, the, these are the kinds of dishes you're going to get. They're going to help you do that. You can pick from your favorites. Pick your favorites from 50 different weekly options. You can skip weeks if you need to. You can change your delivery date. You can update your preferences all in the HelloFresh app. I love an app. An app helps. Customize your favorite dishes with the new Hello Custom offerings by swapping out one protein or side for another. I love that. Maybe if you're on a specific uh, diet or something and you can't have one thing or you have an allergy, whatever, or maybe you just don't like something, you can mix the switch and go, well, I'd like that, but I don't want it with the, with this specific thing. Man, guys, they are laying this out for you. They're making it as easy as possible to eat right and cook quick in your home. So go to HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds16 and use TasteBuds16 to get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's a hell of a deal. Okay. HelloFresh.com slash TasteBuds16 and then use code TasteBuds16 to get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's it. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Um, Hugh was just mentioned the artwork while I was off camera. Like these were on, yeah, because the set of the special was was Night Gallery. It was the Rod Serling. Right. It was a take on Night Gallery. So then we had these paintings made. The artist did a really great job. Very good. Do you remember a restaurant in New York City called Night Gallery? No. It was... Um, it was in the West Village, and it was when you walked in, it was all paintings like this under black light and stuff like that. It was the same oh, people cool. that own um, uh, Jekyll and Hyde. Jekyll and Hyde. They had like four of those. Oh, they that's Slaughtered cool. Lamb, Jekyll and Hyde, one more, and Night Gallery, and it was kind of cool. And then it went out of business. Slaughtered Lamb is that a we American Werewolf in London? Yeah, you never been in there. It's like you go in, they have like werewolf statues. I and, never and, put that together. Oh, yeah. You go in, they have like skeletons all over the place. It's so like touristy and shit. Like between the two of them, I, if I was you, I'd go to Slaughtered Lamb. It's a little more off the beaten path. Yeah. Um, and it's just like a regular bar, but it's horror themed. Jekyll and Hyde's gone. No. Pretty what? sure. I think it's closed. Yeah. Get out of here. I don't think Night Gallery's still around no, either. No, Night Gallery's I... long gone. That I know. Jekyll and Hyde closed after all these years? Um. Yeah, put... put uh. But there were two. There was one oh, up no. down. Wait a minute. And the one in the no, West open. Village. It's open, 7th Avenue. Yeah. I, I thought it was closed. Because I don't remember seeing the sign last time I was down there. Oh, that's great. That's good that it's still open. Um, Slaughtered Lamb, you know what? I never went in because from the outside, I thought it was just a run-of-the-mill Irish pub. No, it's it's all horror-themed. There's like dioramas and life-size dioramas. I would have went in. Not that I don't like an Irish pub, but... No, I, I never you. felt like uh, when I was walking by, like, oh, I got to go in this place, you know? Yeah, I think Slaughtered Lamb started as like a touristy trap thing. Then just it's been open for decades now, so it's not anymore. It's just kind of like a local horror themed bar. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, like I, I like it. I, I've, I, it's one of my go tos in Manhattan. Oh, I love it, man. Yeah, I got to go there. But uh, I'm gonna take a date. Take a date. To the old Slaughtered Lamb. <laughs> Yeah, I'll find a you know, I'll find one of these goth girls, take them over there. You don't, yeah, it's not really like you walk in and it's not really a horror crowd. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine it's not like <laughs> people aren't dressed up and stuff. No, not really. But you see, they got the skeleton on the roof right there already outside. I must not. I must have my head up my ass. I would have noticed the skeleton on the yeah, roof. It's, Maybe it's, I've never walked by this place. Yeah, Slaughtered Lamb, one of one of my favorite bars in Manhattan. Where's it at? It's in uh it's uh Westville? It's in the it's in the West Village off of uh where's that movie theater that Netflix up bought right across from their cages? Oh, they they bought the IFC Center? It's right around the corner from there. Okay. So, yeah. 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 I thought yeah, that's where I thought it was. I must have all right, whatever. All right. So Speaking of pubs, all right. This is what we're debating. What are we debating? We're doing a we're 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 back in effect, folks. We're doing the first ever rematch on Taste Buds. Mm -hmm. Two firsts today on the Taste Buds program. The first ever rematch. Yeah. And the first ever time 
me and Brian Quinn are hosting together. Because yeah. you've hosted a bunch with Sal. Yes. Uh, when I'm and we always appreciate you stepping in. You're like the you're like the taste buds guest host now. I'll take it. It's a fish. I have fun. Um, I feel no pressure. <laughs> oh look at that! Somebody put we're do, we're doing the rematch of weed versus alcohol, people. Okay. The last time we did it, a friendship and a podcast almost ended. Whoa! Got it that got, serious? It got ugly over weed and alcohol. Yeah, and you know who brought most of the anger? The weed people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, this is cool. I f I fought against weed. I fought I fought on behalf of alcohol. But you're again. You generally are not a weed guy, right? I used to be. Used to be. I'm not anymore. Okay. Which is why today's battle is going to be interesting. Because I'm going to battle for weed today. All right. To show this audience, I'm a good sport, and I do see its qualities. Okay. I just don't partake in it much anymore. Okay. And by much, I mean I, I I might maybe eat a five gram edible once a year. That is a low amount for New York City in the in the, yeah. the year of our Lord twenty twenty two. And I got to be cocked on booze before I do it. Yeah. I got. I, if I did that right now, just five, I would I would freak out. I'd have a panic attack. What do you lose to hangovers? Because I went out for drinks the other night with my my manager. And I had three martinis, which does not sound like like for me that doesn't sound like a lot. No, but then the next I I didn't even feel that drunk. Like I felt like a healthy buzz, but nothing out of control or anything like that. And the next day I could not get off the couch. I was vomiting. Oh wow! And I vomiting. I used. I'm telling you, I would really? I would just start getting so dizzy and I would go throw up. And I was, I'd be like, this is fucking nuts because I always consider myself a fairly accomplished drinker. <laughs> you are. I've drank yeah. with you. But, but I mean, I'm I'm having a similar thing happen now. Mine's medicine related, because I'm on some anti-anxiety meds and stuff like yeah, that. Okay, um, they working? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> they are to an extent. Yes. Okay. Let's put it that way. But I also have an incredible amount of anxiety-inducing things on my plate right now. You know, sure. everything I'm doing is a question mark <laughs> yeah, around right. it. You know, I they opened a you. sandwich shop at a bar. Yeah. I do stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't have anything that's just like, this is secure. Don't worry. Yeah, I you mean, know? if it makes you feel better, like, I don't think it ever changes. I mean... You don't feel, even after all the success, you don't You don't ever go, it's, it's going to be Okay. No, you know why it gets into, like, existential crisis then? Like, there's something ch switches when you go from, like, survival to, like, what's after, like, oh, all right, I mean, I guess I could just fucking chill out and, like, you know, work every once in a while. We could tour. I mean, the same shit you're doing. Like, like when you, once you're not worried about that path, like, you're like, I'll, I'll figure it out. It's more of a confidence of, like, I'll figure it out. It's not really about money in the bank. It's more about getting to a place where you're like, if I ever needed to do something, I'll figure it out. I said to my parents when I was home at Easter, I just said, listen, you know, uh, I should be happy. Like, I should be ecstatic. You should. I've fulfilled so many of my dreams at this point, and they're all going pretty well. Like, it's nothing is disastrous. Right. Nothing is failing. And I go, and, I, and everything makes me anxious still. Like, it's yeah. like, it's just, but also I think a lot of that is the, is the environment we're living in. I don't, I think people have PTSD from COVID and. Oh, I, for sure. Yeah. You know, it's a wild scene out there. So. Yeah. It's a little crazy. Um, but. Um, oh, anyway, meds. Okay. <laughs> so I'm on meds and uh, <laughs> they affect my alcohol intake greatly. So now my thing I noticed I have, if I have five drinks, which I know a lot of you will go, wow, that's a lot of drinks. For me, that's That nothing. doesn't sound like a lot to no. me, right? That's nothing to me. Five drinks now will put me almost on my ass, like where I'm like, oh. where I'm like, I got to get out of here. Like I'm starting oh. to get like messy, you know? As your friend, that's upsetting to hear. <laughs> as, as your opponent on beer pong, I'm so fucking excited. <laughs> And I hope that your weakness maintains throughout the summer so that I might finally crush you. Because I can't stop thinking about the, that beer pong. I talk well, about it all the time. I can't get it. You're in my head. You're living rent-free right there. I'm not even ashamed to admit it. I think about it all the time, how you just decimated me. That's so funny, dude. Yeah. And I was with... So we have... You've talked about this on, on this show before. This show, tell them, Steve, Dave. I've talked about it everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, Q and I have a very healthy uh, uh, beer pong rivalry. And the other guy I have it with, I was the other two guys I have it with. You're my number one adversary, but I also I have don't know it. Why you keep beating me? You just beat me. It's like I'm a whipped dog. It's great though. <laughs> it's great. 
<laughs> it's great for me. Every, you know what? I beat him once, uh, and I took the title from you, and I had it for like three hours, and then you just <laughs> sauntered back in the pool and took it back. I remember the most <laughs> mad I ever... Not mad. No, I just bring it out of people. I bring the worst out of people. I have a, I have a gift for be it. Such a prick because <laughs> there's no enjoying the game. It's no like. It's not like I was just in the pool. He'll be like he'll get in your cup and then like he'll be like drink, uh, uh, and then it's like. <laughs> Well, I was going to drink it anyway, but now this motherfucker is telling me to drink. So now I don't want to drink. Even though I the per- the reason I'm playing the game is to drink. <laughs> because the fucking way he is, it makes me not want to drink, but I, I have to drink. Uh, I get a... Uh, yeah, I, I... Drink it. I, I get... I come from a... I come from a beer pong school of getting under the other person's skin uh, as much as possible. It. Like, that's how we... That's how we always played it. Like, me and my buddy Scott who's like my oldest friend in the world. I've known him since we were literally babies. We we would we would play at parties as a team. Right. Like we're like where we didn't we knew like one person that invited us or whatever. <laughs> so we were playing against strangers and we like literally like one time these girls ran around the table to hit us. They got so mad at us yeah. because we were being so obnoxious. Like not like not about gender or anything, we were just being obnoxious <laughs> opponents. All right. You know what I mean? The millennials aren't going to come after you. Relax. I just want to make, a sh- make yeah, sure. They, 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 yeah, <laughs> we weren't being like, "Hey, honey, nice skirt." Like yeah. we weren't doing anything like that. How, we were well, just, how was their skirt, by the way? Was it nice? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit face. I don't remember. But also, who's that kid on SNL? Um, Kyle. Uh, oh God, Kyle. Mooney? Yeah, Kyle Mooney. Kyle Mooney, yeah. So Kyle Mooney is really good friends with my buddy Nick Rutherford. I think they used to be in a comedy group or something together. And Nick Rutherford was one of my best pals when I lived in L.A. We used to hang out all the time. Nick's great. Uh, and I went to... <laughs> I went with Nick at a party, and I played Kyle Mooney in beer pong. And he had, a, he had a beard at the time and a hat like that with the hair coming out. And I kept going, hey, Spielberg, nice fucking shot. You stink, right? I kept calling him Spielberg, and he got so mad, he just walked. He just left the oh, game. <laughs> I never met him. I had never met him in my life. And I, so he can't hang I, with you. <laughs> Kyle Mooney can't hang with you. So, and I was laughing so hard. I was like, Rutherford, I pissed off your boy Moody. Something fierce. What, what is inside of you that makes you want to do this? Like, why can't you just play a game? There's something about beer pong where when you're you're lo- when you're winning, it's so glorious. And when you're losing, it's so infuriating. Be- I think because you're having to, to drink and you're getting drunk, it feels like a punishment when yeah, you're losing. Yeah, I, I didn't. It didn't until I played you. It, <laughs> like it, it just felt like it was just fun. It's not like flip cup. It's you know, there's tons of drinking games out there where you can get plenty drunk. Yeah, quarters, whatever. Beer pong is different. It's <laughs> it's when you're losing. It is a direct punishment that that is connected to your skill. All right. So you're getting drunk and you're going, I don't want to be this drunk, but I'm losing because I'm not playing skillfully enough. Sure. And it just sets a great stage <laughs> for shit talk. It's just an amazing stage for yeah. shit talk, in my opinion. I'm not asking you to stop. I'm not going to. Like, I, that's, <laughs> that's like were, my wouldn't. job is to like beat you. My job is not to crumble. And, to and to ask for you to fucking go easy and, and stop playing. My game is to my job is to beat you at your own game. <laughs> and until I accomplish that, it's on me. So I was last night with McGinley. I'll send you into the West, my friend. <laughs> in disgrace. I'll send you to the West in disgrace I, when I get when I get my full powers. I was with uh, I was with McGinley, Ryan Mc, yeah. uh, and the other Joe last night. Yeah. They they came to Joey Roses and we hung out. And we were talking about beer pong because those are okay. the other two guys that I played on that trip beside you yeah. that also I annoyed the shit out of. Uh-huh. Um, and Ryan was talking about how his parents have that, his family has that house down the shore. Okay. And he was like, we all got to go. And I was like, I made him take out his phone and, and set up a week in July and he's going to start oh, reaching nice. out to shoes available. But that was the whole thing. I was like, we got to go. We got to play beer pong in the pool. We got to do this, dude. Like, like I was so excited, man. Yeah, it's I was coming. So excited, yeah. But now, now due to your medication, your game might be off. I plan to be <laughs> off of it by then. Okay, all right. So you're going to be a basket case, but you'll be at the top of your game fucking beer pong. That's wise. how I was last year. All right, all right I'm excited. And when you're winning at beer pong, you're not too much of a basket case. You're feeling yeah. pretty good about yourself. Uh, all right. There it is. There it is. Um... Yes, but back to what we were saying. 
This is, by the way, I what get, I knew was going to happen. What's that? With today, with the with the with the episodes, because that was like, well, what do you guys? What do you want to? What topics you want to talk about? And I was like, it does not matter. <laughs> like, it doesn't yeah. matter to me at all. Yeah. Like, because I know that this is the way it's going to go with me and you. Sal, um, today, you know what? I'm going to save it for the next episode. Okay, because just I'm going to. Should I tell them what? Yeah, what, yeah just tell them. Why not? Okay, well, because they don't know because it's not a polled episode. Oh, okay. Should no. we just drop it as a surprise? You want to just do a surprise? Sure. Yeah, all right. Yeah. We'll do it as a all surprise. Right. Okay. All right. I'll, I'm going to save that story until... Okay, got okay. it. Put a pin in there. Anyway, um, so uh, all right. So here's the thing. Okay, we got to do the chant, the battle chant. Do you know what it is? It's B-A-T-T-L-E, buds. Uh, do we do that already in the beginning? That's We did the T-A-S-T. Oh, buds. okay. Got it. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Yep. B A T T L E buds. All right. All right. Team Weed is me. Team Alcohol is you. Q. Yeah. State your argument. I want you to open with why you think alcohol is superior to marijuana. Well, I think it's more. I think it's the ends. It's really the beginning and the ends of it that are better. Like I think that one on alcohol, I find that I'm just more like. I smoke weed and I'm done. Like I'm on the couch or I'm like just nodding or like I'm not part of the conversation or anything right. like that. Whereas with alcohol, I'm very much a part of the conversation. And right. I and I think there's something to I like sitting around the bar drinking right. way more than I like standing on a sidewalk street corner smoking and passing around the joint and stuff right. like that. I just think the experience with alcohol is better. The taste of alcohol is better. And the ultimate, as as long as you don't go too far with alcohol, the general feeling of alcohol is better. Okay. See, now, this I'll say this about alcohol. It does put a pep in your step. Yeah. It does, um, it can make you the life of the party. Mm -hmm. You know, these are positives, you know, for, for some people sure. when they drink it. It it certainly takes you out of the bad, right? Like when you're well, or locks you in, right? Yeah, I I would say okay. So speaking to the positives, though, speaking to the positives, uh, you know, you're having a bad day. A few right. drinks will put you in a better mood, usually. Whatever yeah. you know. And there's something about it that but, too. Let me. Uh, I'm, right, sorry right. To, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just I I just wonder. Like I don't have this feeling when I smoke weed. I do have this feeling of alcohol that I'm taking part in like a human tradition. Like, when I'm in a bar drinking with people, I'm like, there were people in ancient fucking Egypt doing the same shit, probably making the same jokes, for like, you know what I mean? Like, just in whatever, you know, language. And, like, like it's a, I just feel part of a continuity. And I know you, I agree. weed could have the same argument could be made about it, but I just don't feel it's as American as drinking. Well, okay, so then I'll speak to that point. Uh, yeah, you know, like alcohol. You're in a bar drinking, you can go, man, they did this in the Old West. Yeah. The pioneers of this country, the people that conquered this country, and I don't mean the bad parts of the conquering. I mean, like, but just went out into the frontier, and, and God knows what was going on out there. <laughs> they were drinking in a bar in the saloon in their sure. town. That's the history. But weed's got a better history because you got Woodstock, man. You know? Wow, what a difference Woodstock made. <laughs> You guys were just so great at Woodstock. <laughs> That's your history with weed. Who needs the people that conquered the frontier in this country when you can be part of the history of a bunch of hippies puking and having sex with each other in their stinking dirty ass tents <laughs> as some awful band goes on and on on the stage? Crosby, Stills, and Nash, whatever horse shit they booked at that festival. Oh, God. You know what I mean? So weed's better in that sense. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so you can't take it. You know what else I want to say, too? I'll take weed. I'll take no, no, weed. No, no, you take no, alcohol. Because no, 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 you can't no. even stomach it. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm making good arguments for weed. Let me say this, but too. how? Drinking will make you the life of the party. Weed just lets you be the stupid asshole you always were <laughs> deep down and not care. Just walk around so fried yeah. <laughs> that you don't care. And what's better than a drug that makes you not care about all of your flaws and faults? Well, isn't that, well, that is a positive, right? <laughs> You see what I'm doing here? I, I'm doing a thing here. I, I, I see the bit. You're definitely working a bit. I got it. Folks, let's talk eyeglasses. I love eyeglasses. Why? I need them. Because I need them, though, I wear them every day. And because I wear them every day, I use them as a means to 
express my style and, uh, and express who I am. And I think that's very cool. I like great choices. I like very customizable options when it comes to eyewear. And that's why I like Pear. Pear is doing a lot of cool stuff and offering you some cool frames and combos that are really going to let you express yourself and find your style through this part of the body. Very nice. Uh, I like the Casper quite a bit. I also like another pair of frames they have called the Kirby. Very cool. I also like that their base frames are starting at just $60, including the prescription lenses. That's important to me. Uh, glasses, eyeglasses, you know, back in the day, folks, when I was your age, um, you know, you'd spend three, four hundred dollars with insurance to get your glasses. The fact that there's a company like Pear right now offering you soup to nuts, the whole thing for 60 bucks. That's pretty incredible. And also, it's not a limited experience. There are hundreds of top frame designs to match whatever base frame you choose. You can change your glasses like you change your clothes. I like that maybe you can get a few pairs if you want to spend a little bit of cash for the price of what it used to cost you for one. You can get started by choosing your base frame with options from the square to the cat eye. Okay, every frame comes in six different colorways, including classic black, or you can remix it to blue tortoise or whatever, get crazy. And then you pick your top frames and build a collection to match your personality. This is very cool. I really like this. Uh, they're fiercely individual and they are leading by example, or they're letting you lead by example, they're leading by example in the eyeglass industry. And then that's going to let you lead by example in, in your personal life. Hey, look at me. I got a base frame and then I put a top frame on and I got a combo going here and I'm mixing and matching and I'm making things happen. And you're not. Look at you with your plain glasses. I got something happening here. There are companies out there that create an illusion of choice in the eyewear industry, and they're keeping prices artificially high. Pair Eyewear has forged their own way, and they're designing all their looks in-house. They're getting rid of all these traditional nonsensical things that are making it tough for you to get the pair of glasses you want. So go to PearEyewear.com slash taste buds for 15% off your first purchase. That's 15% off at P A I R eyewear.com slash taste buds get glasses as unique as you are one pair infinite style starting at sixty dollars when you visit pair eyewear.com slash taste buds for 15 percent off your first purchase. folks uh if you know me and you know this show and you know what we talk about on this show it's food it's a lot of food but one thing that goes hand in hand with food and it's also another thing we talk about a lot of this show is proper diet and weight loss. And that's where Noom comes in. I love what Noom is doing. Noom has created such a, an, an authentic approach to the experience of weight loss and, and, and managing diet and that sort of thing. I, I just have such a respect for what they do. And I found I find it and have found it so helpful because it's something that I've always sort of had a hard time with in, in my life. Uh, I think it's really, really great that they have created a psychological approach to diet and to weight loss. And let me talk about that a little more uh, with a little more illustration. Unlike other restrictive diets or workout programs, Noom uses uh, psychology to empower you. OK, uh, they're giving you practical knowledge and skills that help you build a smarter and more sustainable long term eating uh, uh, regiment, if you will, uh, or eating behaviors. The psychological approach is based on scientifically proven principles like cognitive behavioral therapy, which I'm a big fan of, CBT for you insiders. And it's just based on helping other people under helping people in general understand their relationship with food and why they eat what they do. That's what I love so much about Noom. It, it, it helped me and it will help you get why you're eating things at a certain time, why you're craving certain things, uh, why you're defining food in the way you are. It helped me get out of reward eating. It helped me get out of the zone of uh, uh, indulgent eating, uh, entertainment eating. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, there are a lot of terms for it and ways you could refer to it. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to the same place. It's not eating properly. 
Uh, and I think redefining your relationship with food and understanding what's going on up here is how you fix those issues uh, and those bad habits. More than 60% of users lose 5% or more of their body weight weight by 16 weeks and more than 60% of users engage with the program, keep that weight off for more than a year. That's a thing too. It's like a lot of these diets you see, it's fast weight loss, but it's fast weight gain back. And Noom is helping you avoid that. They're grounded in science, what they're teaching you. It's the heart of everything they do. Science, science, science. They publish more than 30 peer-reviewed scientific articles that inform users, practitioners, scientists, and the public about how their methods work and how effective these methods are. And also, here's some good news. An off day is totally okay, and it won't set you off course. Noom Weight gently helps you get back on track. I, I love that because a lot of these other diets that I'm sort of passively referring to, I mean, you hit an off day and forget it. That's it. You're back to square one. It's terrible. So what I want you to do is sign up for a trial today and get psychology-based support and motivation to reach your goals by going to noom.com slash taste bud. That's noom.com slash taste bud to sign up for your trial. noom.com slash taste bud. Bud, sign up for your trial. Start eating correctly today by understanding how this relates to this. Uh, wow, you just really are. I mean, I'll take. I could take. Weed. I told you, I got a knack for it. Yeah, I'll take weed. I got it. No, I want to keep defending weed. But why are you not defending it at all? Everybody sees through this. I just said it lets you be the person you really oh, are. Yeah, I, know. I said it's part of history. All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. It, it could help answer. with anxiety. I don't care. It's your no, show. I'll stop. You want? You want to no, no, ride I'll, down I'll, weed? I'll it don't matter it. to me. I'll defend it for real. I'll defend it for real. As long as you know, I don't care either way. No, I know like, you don't I'm care. I'm just here having fun. I, I know. Do that. I had to break balls a little bit. I, I'll defend <laughs> yeah. it for real, though. I will say this about weed, and I mean this very sincerely. Let's this talk is, positives. This is not a misdirection. I'm not, and I'm, mm. guys, the other stuff was just a joke before you all start bombarding me with comments. I'm joking around. Uh, the uh, weed, we used to do a thing when I was in college. This is this is 100% true. Okay. And this is also the bummer to me. Not bummer. I, I think it's really cool that weed is legal now. Like, it should be, obviously, right? Sure. And I also think that if I could have told 18-year-old me, hey, dude, you're going to be able to walk across the street one day from your apartment and buy weed mm -hmm. without any hassle, whatever. Because I used to jump through flaming hoops to get weed, man. Like, oh, when really? I was in college... Dude, I, I never I, smoked weed till I was 36, so I, I never I had never had any of that experience. I started when I was 17, and, like, dude, we would drive down to, like, the art museum in Philly because they had these, like, drum circles during the summer every Saturday night, and you would just ask, start asking people, does anybody have weed around uh, here? My buddies, you, this is not, this is true. My buddies, when they wanted weed and they couldn't find it, would drive into the worst neighborhood in that they could find in the neighboring town, and just start going up to people and saying, "Does anybody around here sell weed?" Because wow. it was like it was a it was drug dealing. Like you had to, sure, you couldn't just get you it. You had to find drug dealers. And before it became legal, in the in the more recent years, even the dealing was it was a different ball game. Like before I left New York to live in L.A., you could have weed delivered on a bike, and it was fully illegal. But you could get that done, and it was that that to me. Was what year nice. was that? 2015 2016 okay. whatever so that was nuts so i'm going back to i'm going back to 96 97 Ooh, the you know good old I mean? days so like but what we did so first of all when you got weed oh my god it was so exciting it was so <laughs> exciting i remember my best one of my best memories ever in college was me and my roommate jim sitting there was a graveyard behind our dorm cool and after a night yeah after a night of hopping to college parties yeah we sat in a graveyard against a headstone which i know is very disrespectful oh at the time yeah, I, didn't, I grew up playing in the cemetery you know, i got it i didn't realize how disrespectful i don't think it was it's disrespectful time. i don't think it is if i was in that grave i'd be like hey man guys yeah. th thanks for stopping by like <laughs> I wouldn't find that disrespectful. I mean, you guys aren't like fucking sh smearing shit no, the, no. and like swastikas on there. No, no, no. Like that. Like you're just chilling out. We just sat against the yeah. headstone and we smoked the joint. And it was one of my favorite college memories ever because I remember we were laughing so hard because my buddy goes, 
in the middle of it, we were so stoned. And like right when you hit that point where you're like, holy shit, I'm high. Yeah. He goes, look at this. Look at what we're doing. My parents are proud of me. (laughs) 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 That's great. And I never, I never, uh, I've had, I've had the best times on booze. Okay. Like, like the memories, like the, even what we were just talking about, the beer pong memory. Yeah. I've had such amazing memories on booze, but I never had the excitement that I had when, when I got, when I got weed, it was so exciting. Dude, we used to do a thing where we would all hang out, me and two or three of my other buddies, we'd get together in one of our dorm rooms Yeah. when we had weed, we were like. 1920 when we did this and it's going to sound crazy but i'm telling you it was awesome we would build a fort in the dorm room like you did when you were a kid oh okay and we would go inside and get high in the fort and play music and like sit there Honestly, listening it sounds nice dude it was so fun yeah. and we'd put on like i remember like uh my friend jerry was one of the guys that we did it with jerry put on the danny elfman CD oh, of like all of music in a darkened theater, yeah. yeah. Music for a darkened yeah. theater, and he put on one of the themes, and it had this long build up. And we were like, "What is this? This is so weird and creepy. Like, what is this?" And he's like, "Just wait, just wait." And when it kicked in, it was the Batman Returns theme, oh, awesome. and it went into the Batman theme, uh-huh. and he, Da-da-da-da. we were so high in this fort. And he, I just got chills. We were so high in the fort, and he goes. It's Batman, dude. <laughs> and we were like, this is fucking awesome. But like, I, as, as for all the pub crawls I've ever done and like the, 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 the hilarious times playing beer pong and the basement parties and the keg stands and whatever, I never on alcohol had moments like that where they were oh, like literally that really? I would describe as magical. Where I was like, this is like, I'm in another, I'm in another stratosphere right now, dude. Like I'm experiencing something that I literally cannot experience with any other uh, substance taking me out of whatever, you know? Yeah. But what about like, uh, cause I've been in bars where like the whole bar has broken out into like, like a song will come on. Right. And everybody will just start like singing like and stuff like that. And, like, that feels very communal. That's like, cool, but it's always a shit song. It's never a good song. It's, it's always Come On Eileen or uh, fucking okay, Journey. Yeah. Well, it could be Piano Man. I don't know how oh, you feel about Billy Joel there. But, I love uh, Billy Joel. Piano Man, I'll you're, slip you're my over wrist. It. Okay, all right. I'll you're over it. that terrace right there. Don't do that. So, right, okay. He how, hates the song. He, I he remember said he's he sick of it. He every fucking time <laughs> I see him. So, the, the like, I, I know, like, after 9-11, we were in a bar, Calico Jacks, which is still in business on 42nd. Yeah, yeah I know Calico Jacks. And uh, it was the first time I went out after 9-11, and I remember that feeling of, like, we're going to die tonight. Like, we're taking our lives into our own hands. It was, like, two weeks after 9-11, and every week was like, oh, you're going to get bombed this week. And I had a buddy right. that worked for the FBI, and he's like, it's definitely going to happen again. It was, like, all that shit going on. And I remember going to the bar and like we were all drinking and I was like somebody just started a USA chant and it was like and like now that sounds absurd right but back then it was the healing like we needed and it was like right. all these drugs go oh, USA and it was so fuck and I remember that feeling of being like wow man like and that that wasn't I don't think you'd get that on weed I think that's like an alcohol thing uh you don't you don't but music music you mentioned music music hits me in a way on weed that it doesn't hit me on anything else mm-hmm. um sometimes if uh you know i'm not above a, a little dab of speed as he says in, oh really uh, as he as he says in uh train spotting uh, a little dab of speed will do um i got a train spotting i want to i want to get back to train spotting. okay Just remind me but a little a little speed meets alk yeah. you know when you got that body buzz going like <laughs> music sounds i remember jay jay what Moore, speed I mean, I know what speed is, but like, what is speed? It comes like, in many forms. Okay, because I've never, that's like, I've never done that. I remember Jay Moore said, uh, Jay Moore had a bit about when you're in, I forget what the bit was, but he described being in the zone. Okay. And he goes, he goes, you know, when you're, uh, he goes, he goes, you know, when you're at uh, Dave and Buster's, he goes, you know, you're at Dave and Buster's, you did a couple key bumps, you're on four beers and you're just sinking those three pointers <laughs> on the basketball Is that machine. what it's like? And he's like, he's like, you know how good that feel? Like, I forget what the bit was, but I was like, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Okay. So sometimes when you're in that zone with a drug and a, and booze, the, the music will hit me in a way where you go, oh my God, life is fucking beautiful. Yeah. But that's a... 
you know, you're, you're making sauce. You're making gravy. It's yeah. like you got to hit the ingredients perfect. With weed, every time I smoked it yeah. and I listened to music, it was a wonderful experience. It, it, and it still is. Like that once a year when I take the edible and I have a few drinks, I still get to that place. M- movies... On the other hand, uh, could go sideways on me on weed. I, I movies I never enjoyed because there'd be long periods of silence, and I didn't know if the people I was watching the movie with were enjoying it or okay, not. So you got in your own head. Yeah, and then I would start to bug out. <laughs> yeah, especially if I picked the movie. You know. Sure. Well, that's probably in you to begin with, just amplified by the weed, right? Yeah. That's why I stopped because what right. was in me, was you know, out. whatever. But I'll say that's the positive I'll say about alcohol for me. Alcohol does not amplify my worst tendencies. I, I, I am a guy that does have a... I do have a little bit of a short fuse. I do get aggravated by things. Um, and I do... And I am a guy that carries a lot on his uh, lack of shoulders about, you know, I, 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 you know I'm a brooding kind of guy. And, um, but when I drink, I don't go in that direction. I don't know wow. why. I just don't. Because I've never had a weed experience that's ended badly. It's ended with me falling asleep. I've had plenty of alcohol experiences that have ended in a fight, like either a fight in a bar, which, you know, is especially rare as you get older. But, like, certainly, like, if you're there with your girlfriend or something <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> I'm going to tell the story. We can cut it if you want us to. What? I saw you pop off. When? <laughs> on weed? No, not on oh, weed. Oh, on alcohol. On alcohol. I oh, saw no. you pop Why? off. Why? What is it? <laughs> well, we were, uh, we were at a casino recently. And oh, no. oh, is that that guy's trying to throw me out? No, <laughs> my pimp was there too. We were all there. We were playing at a table. Yeah, you had two. You you were sitting in front of two hands because your friend had gone to the bathroom. Yeah, and they wanted you to watch the hand. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. And so the far. dealer said you can't play two hands, and you go, "I'm not playing two hands." You right away, you had a chip on your shoulder, and you go, "I'm not playing two hands." My friend went to the bathroom. They said to watch the hands. You just deal, all right? Yeah. Like, and, and the guy's like, all right. And he dealed. And you busted on both. You started screaming at him. You screamed at him and accused him, him of doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and then shortly after that, yeah. I said, Brian, I got to go to bed. I'm tired. And you went, oh, fuck you. <laughs> and I was well, like, that yeah. was a joke. All that no, sounds that was like, a joke, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, but you were amped up, is my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but that yeah. night ended well. We went to the club. That was a fun. Yeah, night. that was that was that was, that was fun. Yeah, but that ended with me dancing on the stage with those great. girls. Yeah. That was that's fun. awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that was fun. So my point is, and I don't say it to judge. For whatever reason, I don't go to that place with booze. Yeah, and I would think I would. That's what's funny. You're the calmest, nicest, sweetest guy I know, right? Well, I don't know about that. Uh, you're, you're, you're top five, easily, that I've ever met. <laughs> okay. All right? Thank you. That's not I wouldn't have said. I wouldn't have guessed that. You're Thank a you, pleasant man. guy. Oh. You know, I remember once uh, two comics, Russ Maneve, hilarious guy, Tom Shalhoub, uh, also hilarious guy. Russ, we, we were on a show once at Caroline's together. I remember uh, this is the greatest compliment I ever heard. Russ pointed at Tom Shalou and he goes, this guy, if I'm ever in a crisis situation, that's the guy I want there. No one is more soothing than this man. Soothing? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I was like, wow, what an amazing compliment. But I would apply that compliment to you because I'm like, you're a guy I'd want around if something went sideways because you, you, you're, you're a calming presence. So, Thank you. That's and very it's nice funny to hear. because I'm a sort of a dark. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get I'm me sort of, <laughs> I'm sort of a dark whatever. But when I drink, I don't get amped. When you okay. drink, sometimes you do. It's a very. Fu- it's funny yeah. that we go in kind of unexpected ways sometimes. Not yeah. always, but you know what no, I mean. No, 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 no. If I, if I, if I'm like, I just get like a sloppy drunk. Like I'm yeah. sure. Like I remember like what you're talking about the bar. Like I, I in my head, I'm positive. I was like trying to fucking be funny. And it just doesn't come out that way because I'm a drunk fucking asshole, which is why, you know, I don't drink. I, I can't drink that much anymore. I just don't do it. Um, I mean, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Because it's not the losing money that bothers me. Like if I go to, if I lose, I'm not there to win. I don't gamble to win. I think with both, I think with both these substances. Yeah. I'll tell you this. That's another pro I'd give to weed. Yeah. Gambling on weed. I think great because you have a way stronger chance of locking in and really like right. I always found that sort of thing when I was high great 
I always had a problem with people driving high for the same reason I have a problem with people driving drunk. I'm no saint. I, yeah. In my life, I've done both. I know I shouldn't have, and I never will again. Uh, but, like, my point is, is, you know, I'm not, I'm not chastising, but overall, I do have a problem with it. You know what yeah. I mean? And, um, but, so I hate when people say I drive better when I'm high. That's just, to me, that's a very stupid thing to say. Agreed. But I will agree that weed does give you a, a mechanical focus um, you know, that's why a lot of people smoke before they work out or they smoke before they clean the house. Oh, man. You know what man I mean? told me a story where he'll smoke like joints before he works out. And I'll be like, how do you do it? I, c- I couldn't do that. Right. You could work out on weed? I couldn't. I'm just saying people oh, do. Okay. I get why people. But like some. I do edibles before the gym. Really? It's there awesome. Yeah. Wow. What is it? Just, just. You just super focus and the music is way better. I guess my closest mm. example would be uh, video games. Like a video game, like when I smoked weed, I would get like, I would yeah. be locked in, dude. Like you, you would yeah. be like having the game of your fucking life. Yeah. That booze, that's not happening. You know what I mean? Too distracting like just, too. Plus you got to get up and like refill your glass. You got to go get another beer. Something about weed, you just like put the joint down and keep going. But the downside, and this is the pro and con of both, right? I think the pro of both of these substances is when you're in the zone, in the right environment, and it's working, nothing is better. When it goes sideways on you, yeah. even in what you perceive to be the right environment, there's nothing worse. So with alcohol, we've already covered, like it can lead to the bar fight. Yeah. The bar experience can be everybody singing the Irish song together and sure. swaying or whatever, you know. Like we all wish it was instead of don't stop believing. You know what I mean? It's never a cool like Irish whatever. It's always some, sh- like I said, just shit so- fucking song from the 80s. Anyway. Yeah. Um, You're right about that. <laughs> but that's perfect, right? That's the perfect scenario. That, But un- unfortunately, that's also the place where the brawl breaks out sometimes. For me with weed... The pro is, like I said, the music, the lock-in. Oh, my yeah. God, I feel it. I'm, I, I feel the notes Maybe co- going through me. Maybe a bit. Right. Yeah. But I've also had a full-on panic attack when weed hit sure. me too hard at a concert where I had to leave. And Ooh, the next what concert? It kills me. They're my favorite band, and I've seen them since. But that, Fu Manchu, I got the shirt Fu hanging Manchu. right out there. Um, they're, they're a stoner rock band, and their Fu Manchu is, dare I say, righteous. Righteous. They're just the greatest band well, of all I'm time. I'm listen to them. I don't, They're awesome. I've, I've heard of them. And I've had the pleasure of, like, kind of getting to know them over Instagram, uh, like, which nice. has been really nice. How but, nice. like, uh, not know them, but, like, we, we made, con- we connected, and they like, got, they're yeah. cool guys. Yeah, like, yeah, it was very cool. What made you freak out? I don't, I was in, I was already into the, the period of my life where I wasn't really smoking, but I was new to L.A., and L.A. had dispensaries, and I got my card just for kicks my medical card for kicks because I was like, I couldn't believe this was a thing. And um, my friends came to visit and the last night we were going to see Fu Manchu. It was the big night and I ate uh, uh, too much of an edible and I didn't think it was going to hit me. And then I was drinking. I was drinking. I was drinking heavier than I normally would drink. So like I drank two in a matter of probably 10 minutes. I drank two double Jack Daniels on the rocks oh, because shit, because you're at a concert <laughs> oh, yeah. and it's so crowded in the line so long. You so I went two. up, you know, I'm like, just give me two. And I downed one. Yeah. And then I think I might've gotten a two to go. I made this mistake you plenty know? of times. Yeah. So you're sitting there and you're drinking and then yeah. they came out and I'm like, this is fucking right. And they opened with my favorite song. Like I was like, this is the best thing ever. And, like, all of a sudden, you know, the room starts closing in and you start getting that feeling like you took too much acid or something and you're, like, you're on the bad trip and you're, like, I'm having a panic attack. I have to leave. And the idea of getting from that place where I was standing to the outside to get into an Uber was so terrifying. And we were at the Troubadour, dude. The Troubadour's not a big place yeah i've been there yeah you know like it wasn't like we were in some you know god forbid if we had been at a stadium show you've been fucked i would have been fucked yeah i would have been the guy they had to carry out and been like <laughs> what did you take oh look at this poor bastard yeah you know yeah. like That's because i literally was like i need to close my eyes i had a bad mushroom trip once when i was 21 and it was the worst thing i've ever experienced well what's that like talk to me, talk me through a bad mushroom trip i we took these mushrooms 
I, it was when I first moved to Austin. I was with a friend named Don and then a girl he was dating that I didn't really know at the time. And I, what I knew of her, I didn't really like. We didn't really get along too well. Sure. And so that's right there. You're off to a bad start. <laughs> yeah, you're start. off because like, a bad vibe in the mix already. But I didn't know. I was I was like t- 21. I didn't know like that that was, you know, you feel invincible at that age. And every time you did it before, it was fun. So what's going to happen, right? So I took the the mushrooms and we dressed up. It was Halloween. We dressed up. We were going to go and do all this Halloween stuff in the middle of Austin. And uh, I remember I came out of the bathroom ten. And I've always had this thing where I, I metabolize it really fast and nobody ever believes me, but I do. I was, we took them and 10 minutes later, I was like, wow, I'm feeling these things wow. already. They're, they're, they're kicking in. God. And they were like, there's no way, there's no way. There's, and I'm like, I'm telling you guys, I have like the body tingles. Yeah. Like, this isn't in my head. Like I know. Huh. And they were like, well, we don't feel anything yet. And then we went to the first thing. And as we were walking to it, I was feeling, again, it's like cl- everything's closing in, and then. But his, do you not have the wherewithal on mushrooms to be like, I I know what's going on. This is mushrooms fucking on my brain. You you would think that, right? Yeah. You would think that. I would think that. You, you, like uh, it it makes so much sense right now, right? Yeah. But you just can't. You can say it to yourself. It doesn't help though. It just doesn't. You're so gone, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're having a panic attack, you know you're having a panic attack, mm-hmm. but you can't go. I'm just having a panic attack. Your bo- your brain is going. I'm dying right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and you're you're just not going to beat that thing. So so we went. The girl Don was dating. She goes, let's go to the the Capitol lawn because it's really beautiful. Okay, the, the Capitol building, and we'll sit on the lawn. And I was like, and I remember being like, yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea because I remember thinking, oh, sitting down, I'll feel better. The grass, the night sky, the air. And we sat down, and I turned to my friend Don, and I go, dude, this is hitting me really fast and really hard in a really bad way. And I go, when I close my eyes, it's worse. And when, so when I was, when my eyes were open and I was looking at stuff, it was all just kind of like, Bleh. and then when I closed my eyes, I was getting like those light hallucinations yeah. where you see almost like lasers, uh-huh. you know? And my friend Don, I mean, just should be in the Guinness Book of World Records for the worst thing a person <laughs> has ever said in a moment. <laughs> he goes... I don't know, man. That's never happened to me before. And I'm like, uh, really, dude? And, dude, the night went from there. We we were trying to go see Evil Dead 2 at midnight. That was the big oh, goal. Nice. And I finally got my shit together enough to get up and walk to the movie theater. And we got there. And I sat down. And I was like, I cannot deal with Evil Dead 2 right now. It's too much. So I left. And next in the theater next to it, Best in Show was playing. Which, <laughs> ah, that's great. Yeah, it was the new Christopher yeah. Guest at the time. It's hysterical. Yeah, well, I went in to try to watch that, yeah. and I was like, oh, this will be great. I'll feel good. <laughs> and I wa- it was already going, and I walked in, and it was the part where they're interviewing Eugene Levy, and he goes, I have two left feet. That's not a euphemism. I was actually born with two left feet, and the camera pans out, he has two left feet, and yeah. I was like, this is freaking me out worse <laughs> than the Evil Dead was. So I left, dude. It, there were so many things that were that happened on this. It was so crazy, and I finally, dude. This is nineteen ninety. Wow. No, I'm sorry. This is t- two thousand. Okay. This is right before nine eleven, and um, I I I was two thousand. So, dude, there's there was no Uber. Uh. Austin was not a place that had tons of cabs. So I was trying to get a cab. You actually, back then, you had to call for a cab. Sure, I remember. And I went into a video arcade that was open really late because I guess because they were showing these like late a pay screenings phone with stickers or whatever. on them or shit like that. They didn't have a pay phone. Um, I couldn't find a pay phone. I asked the guy to use his phone. The phone didn't work. Yeah. The guy that like, ran the arcade, he like let me go into the office to use You're the tripping. phone. You're tripping. tripping my balls <laughs> off, dude. He left and shut the door on me. Yeah. And I thought he was going to, like, try to, like, kill me or something. And I was freaking out. And then the phone didn't work. It was just, like, a comedy of errors. I went outside. I f- there was a people on a date sitting on steps. They had a cell phone. That was the thing, too. I didn't have a cell phone. Yeah, this is bad. way back then. Yeah. Wow. They let me use the cell phone. But they were like, dude, we don't know a number for a cab. <laughs> and if you didn't know the number, that was it yeah. back then. That you was couldn't it. search it. There, yeah. was no, wow. there was no browsers in your phone or anything And like I was that. just, it was just the At universe. Best, it was a Nokia. Yeah. It was one... 
gut punch after the next the universe just being like dude you're not getting out of this and just by the grace of god a cab went by i hailed it nice dude he goes where do you live i told him i was sweating i took the window down and he just goes where are you from man and i go philly and he's like oh i'm from philly and i was like really and we just started talking and it it, it was what he i talked needed. it down he didn't even know he was talking to me. Yeah, down. that's great. And I was like, dude, I missed the cheesesteaks, man. And he's like, yeah, dude, you can't get one down here, man. And, like, we were just talking. It was so great. And then I got back to my apartment, and I remember I was tripping my balls off. But now it's just normal tripping, like, where I could handle it. Yeah. You know? And then I was kind of, like, having fun, finally, because I was home and safe. And I remember I put on, I was like, I can't put anything on that's going to freak me out. <laughs> And I put on Andrew Dice Clay. I was like, this is the only thing I can think of that's not going to freak me out. I understand completely what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Right. That's it. Like, and, and I just put that on, and I was laughing, and, I was, and that was the rest of my night. I told that story in even greater detail on uh, Craig Ferguson's radio show. <laughs> and he was like, this is a movie. We should write a movie about this. And me and this kid, Joe, who was his co-host, wrote a screenplay. Get out of here. About that one night. Yeah, about the one night. And, like, every one of those beats I just told you becomes an actual insane moment in the movie. All right. But then it becomes, like, this whole cosmic <laughs> thing. It's actually a really cool screenplay. Yeah, I should why, try why, to, why don't you dust that off? I, I will. I, I, I should. I should. But uh, I was telling the story. I remember Ferguson just being like, fuck, mate. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a good dude. Anyway. I never met him. Great dude. Yeah. Um, all right. We, 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 I, I nicely defended weed, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it, rough at the beginning. Well, it was a joke at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I was joking. Right. I think you did great, bud. Yeah, yeah. I think you did good. I think yeah, I was good. joking yeah. at the beginning. Definitely trashed mushrooms. It sounds awful. I didn't even mean to. <laughs> Sorry, mushroom people. Don't get mad at me. I know they can be great, but I just that was a bad experience that one time. But usually it's been good. Uh, all right. Let's see who wins. We're going to the polls. So I'm alcohol. You're alcohol. We got almost 10,000 votes here. Wow. Every time I do it with Sal, we, we crap out of like 4,000 votes. Oh, wow. All right. Well, this is a good sign. All right. Alcohol. <gasps> What? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Wait, no, wait. Alcohol won last time, right? Oh, uh, let's well, let's see. I'm not sure. <laughs> I forget. I forget too. I feel like it was way closer than that last time. Holy shit! I thought in my head. Do alcohol... you want to read the percents real quick? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Jesus. Sorry, guys. Al I'm I'm dumbfounded. Alcohol fifty nine point six percent. Weed forty point four percent. That's not a blowout. It's a much greater margin than I thought it was going to be. And I got to tell you, people, I can't buy a win on this podcast anymore because <laughs> this counts now towards my losses, which I'm, I'm way behind. I'm getting the shit kicked out of me. And then I defend weed almost as a goof right? because I lose. went so hard on it last time and I lose again. But, I lose. Me, but, but, but the way you guys do this is like these people are not swayed by your arguments. No. So so why do you why do you feel even that you're taking a loss? Five percent margin last time. Yeah. No, like, I'm because I you your win is based on the poll. That's it. Yeah, but, right. But that's but like so the argument almost doesn't even matter. No, the argument does. I think we've tried to figure out a way we could revisit the poll after the argument's been made. That sounds right. Like but a pre-game post, like a pre a pre-show post and an and a after the episode drops one. I got to tell you, you this. swayed by our argument. I got to tell you this, buddy. The it was a 5% margin last time. Yeah. This is a much greater margin. Also, given the response that came at me after I trashed weed, you would think weed would have taken it. I can't believe alcohol won by that much. People I think alcohol. I'm turning the fans of this show. I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of comments that are like, you know what? I used to hate DeRosa, but he yeah. really grew. No. He really grew on me. <laughs> Who would hate you? You'd be surprised. Why? Well, you wouldn't be really. I would. <laughs> I, I, t I, t I take to you. Uh, all right, all buddy. Right, wow. That's a nice. That's a nice. Uh, nice win on your part. Good. Good job. Hey, there. man. I wonder what my record is because at this point, I've had. I think I lose to Sal fairly often. I think I lose to him often. Do you but wanna... again, like I don't feel bad about it. No, no, I don't feel bad either. I just, it's just hilarious that I switched teams at the last minute. And, and I was like, lost. I should defend weed, and I still. Uh... Yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to plug? 
Uh, no, no. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we got the show plugs, right? But but let me just extra plug. I'm taping the special in Houston, Texas, folks. When? Uh, April 19th and April... I'm sorry, May 19th and May 22nd. I will be in Houston. Did I say Austin? Oh, God. I fucked this whole plug up. Guys, let me start the plug over. I'm taping my new hour <laughs> special in Houston, Texas at the Come and Take It Festival, which is being held at the Secret Group, which is a great venue in Texas. I shoot May 19th and May 22nd. On the 20th and 21st, I'm shooting over to Austin to run that same hour four times at the Creek and Cave uh, before I go back and tape the second show for the special in Houston. So come to one or all of those things. Um, and I'm doing this all on myself. Nobody's behind me. I'm paying nice, for it. Self-producing. Yeah, I'm self-producing nice. it. Uh, and it's going to be called I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. So. <laughs> and then what do you do you put it on the website and people go like buy it we'll probably put it up i don't know yet but we'll probably okay. yeah it's it's coming somewhere yeah somewhere that the fans can get to it let's okay. put it that way all right and uh, also check out the merch yeah oh yeah and check out our merch page it's up what's the link it's on sal's website it's on sal's up. website okay so go to sal volcano.com sal volcano comedy.com sal volcano comedy.com and and you can find the merch page with the taste buds merch yep uh, there's Hey Babe merch there, too. If Sal started doing, yeah. like, horror movies, would he, would he get salvocanohorror.com? Like, <laughs> like, is it, is it every, like, each project I mean, project if you've seen his, his act, own... I think it should be that. <laughs> oh! Folks! <laughs> oh, I've seen his act. I, I laughed. I liked it. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. No, it's all right. You can let it, a little poison right. leak out. It's okay. Uh, all right, folks. That's, that's our show. Oh, you, the tradition you have to say, I, the winner has to say, I still love you. I, I still love you. I love you, too. All right. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic, I'm talking taste buds. Taste buds.